Do you have to keep something like, say, the theme of it the same to give that feel of the 70s? Sure. Well, I mean, we had to establish the sound world of the Continental. So my okay. my approach was to uh, try and find a sound that was the theme for the hotel itself, right. essentially. I was thinking, thinking about the Continental as a character. When do you finalize that this is it, this is my music, until when do you keep changing it? I mean, it's a process of continual change um, okay. right up to the last minute. I heard someone once say that they never actually finish a score, they just reach the point at which they have to deliver it. What kind of music do you like? What do you listen to? And you know, if you had a day off today, what would you be listening yeah, I'm to? So, I'm so varied. Um, I mean, I, I, have a, I have a long playlist of actually like 70s, soul music and things okay. like that that I listen to um, but I mean it spans you know it doesn't just span the 70s there's 60s stuff and then 80s stuff <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. Uh, you know, uh, I was at the press conference yesterday mm. and I was listening to you guys. Uh, my first question is, you know, when you're making for something that's set in the 70s, mm -hmm. when you're making it today, there are two things. You have to, you know, keep it the same and you also have to make it slightly different sure. for the younger audience. Sure. What's the biggest challenge for that? Well, the first conversation I had with Albert, he was very, he was very emphatic about the idea that we should leave the 70s behind for the score um, oh, okay. because the, the the amount of needle drops we have from the 70s really mm. establish us in that time period. Um, so then the score can just be more of its own thing. I think had we been trying to reference the 70s too much, it mm. might have been it might have been difficult to distinguish between sort of the commercial and the and the score in some ways. But um, but it was it was it was nice as well because it was quite freeing. It, you know, it, I think if you're constantly referencing back to something, it can mm. perhaps be a little bit restrictive. But uh, I got to I just got to play, you know, which was a really fun thing and um, and you know quite rare sometimes. You know, directors don't always let you play as much, but uh, Albert was you know he let me have fun with it. That's amazing that you know directors let you do that, and you know then you can show your creativity. Uh, but is there anything? Do you keep? Do you have to keep something like say the theme of it the same to give that feel of the seventies? Sure. Well, I mean, we had to establish the sound world of the Continental. So my Correct. my approach was to uh, try and find a sound that was the theme for the hotel itself, right. essentially. I was thinking, thinking about the Continental as a character. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, the series is called The Continental, you know, effectively it is the main character in many ways. But once we'd kind of established that sound and that sound world, then it was easier to build out the, the other themes. So we've got the theme for the brothers, there's a theme for the for Cormac. The uh, there's a theme for the twins. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've all got these. They've all got these little little things that go on and uh, establish you with that character. Right. You know, sound plays such an important role in every scene in every film series. Um, where do you get your best compliment from? What would be the best compliment for you when it releases? Oh, I don't know. I hope people perceive it as uh, something vaguely original. <laughs> um, no, I mean, you know, look, we're, it's something which is in a contextual line with the John Wick films. You know, mm. they wanted a score that was not a million miles away from what Tyler and Joel did with theirs, but they very much wanted it to have its own identity. And hopefully I bring that to to the project. Um, I mean, it was, we're talking about references, you know, I mean, it's... Um, the only real references that I had were my own music. You know, Albert yeah. heard some of my pre-existing music mm. and they tempt all the show with my music before, uh, you know, I got to certain scenes mm. and things like that. So, I mean, that can be quite complex, writing to your own music as well, yeah. you know. Um, you don't ever want to copy yourself. But it is also quite nice because it felt like right from the beginning I was very much an integral part of that sound world and uh, it was nice to have that established so early on. Right, you know, I am someone who really feels making music is absolute magic and mm. it's tougher than making something visually. Um, you know, when you, if, if things were, you know, if your director doesn't give you that leeway of experimenting, exploring, sure. uh, would you go back to the instruments that were that time? Oh. Um, possibly. It, again, it really depends from project to project. I mean, I've been quite lucky with the directors that I've worked with in mm. that they ha they generally have given me quite a free hand, even the ones that have a bit more of a kind of clear idea about what they want. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually sort of, here's what I'm trying, well, here's what I'm aiming for, you do that in the way that you see, see best. So, uh, yeah, luckily, it, it's not something that I've had to sort of That's contend great. with too much. But um, but yeah, usually people come to me for a certain thing. That's great. Uh, you know, until when do you until when, when do you finalize that this is it? This is my music. Until when do you keep changing it? 
Uh, I mean, it's a process of continual change um, okay. right up to the last minute. I heard someone once say that they never actually finish a score. They just reach the point at which they have to deliver it, you know? <laughs> uh, which I kind of relate to. You know, you can keep you can keep tweaking and keep tweaking. Um, but, you know, with this particular one, so in episode one, there's a section in the middle with the cinema cinema section, and that's something like a 12-minute queue that mm -hmm. sp spans over about three scenes. Mm -hmm. um, and that didn't really change from the initial idea that I sent in. So just, you know, that was the initial sketch. And then it went in, it worked perfectly, okay. and that pretty much stayed the same, apart from a few little tweaks with the edit. Um, whereas there were scenes like at the end, which that changed quite dramatically about three or four times, you know. So it just depends, really. It depends how some things just land and they work, and mm -hmm. some things it takes a little <clears throat> bit more time. Right, you know, uh, there's so much work going into every beat and every word and every string. Um, do you come to the fa uh, terms with the fact that this will, people will be consuming on their mobile phone and you're in traffic on yeah. a bus, on a train? Yeah, it is it's it's it is a problem because obviously we work to provide things in the highest fidelity possible. Right. And then fundamentally, most of the time, people consume things in a very reduced format, you know, right. so... Um, I think you always just have to produce things to the to the biggest <laughs> scale and, and best quality that you can, um, and I guess have half an eye on where it may end up in the <laughs> anyway. So, right. And uh, lastly, what kind of music do you like? What do you listen to? And your if you had a day off today, what would you be listening? Yeah, I'm to? so I'm so varied. Um, I mean, I I have a I have a long playlist of actually like 70s soul music and okay. things like that that I listen to. Um, but I mean, it spans. You know, it doesn't just span the 70s. There's 60s stuff and the 80s stuff. Hmm. Um, but then I don't know. I, I like to I like to sort of try and challenge myself. You know, if um, I listen to a lot of contemporary classical music and things like that, and okay. uh, been listening to a lot of Gerard Grise recently. His um, uh, his uh, one of his pieces called Partials, uh, which is all about the harmonic series. So things like that, just try and keep my ear interested. Right. I watched the first episode. You know, your work is out there for everyone to see. It's incredible. Thank, Th you. Uh, thank you for entertaining us. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you.